Good morning and welcome. I'm Pastor Molly Vetter, the senior pastor here at Westwood United Methodist Church, and it's my joy to welcome you into worship today. And whether you're here with us in this space or participating online by live stream, we're grateful to have you as a part of our community. We celebrate the diversity of the community that gathers, giving thanks for diversities of age and race, of gender identity and sexual orientation, believing that each of us brings a special depiction of the image of God to our community. So thank you for participating. I hope that you'll participate as much as you're able, that you'll join with us in prayer and song, that you'll connect your heart to ours as we gather during this sacred time of Advent. In this season of long nights, the darkness is so present with us, and it's our belief that darkness can be a place of healing and growth, like the womb in which Mary grew baby Jesus. There is a thing of God that is happening even now among us. And on this third Sunday of Advent, we gather to celebrate with joy. So this morning, may the joy of Christ be with you. Another morning, and I wake with thirst for the goodness I do not have. I walk out to the pond, and all the way, God has given us such beautiful lessons. Oh Lord, I was never a quick scholar, but sulked and hunched over my books past the hour and the bell. Grant me, in your mercy, a little more time. Love for the earth and love for you are having such a long conversation in my heart. Who knows what will finally happen or where I will be sent, yet already I have given a great many things away, expecting to be told to pack nothing except the prayers which, with this thirst, I am slowly learning. As we, as we light our third Advent candle, the candle of joy we pray. God of grace and righteousness, delight and jubilation, God of good news and great joy for all people. We pray for our hearts, our homes, our world so full of sorrows. God, give us the wisdom and courage to follow the call of your prophets, 
to bear fruit, to be generous and just in all we do. Instruct us with joy. Let our love for the earth and our love for you have long, fruitful conversations in our hearts. Come, Jesus, come. Amen. Now, in the quiet of our hearts as we pray. Joy waits for us at Advent. Joy waits for us to sing. Joy waits for our amazement at the grace in everything. Joy is born in us each day. We pray for divine joy to illumine this space. May this joy shine in our hearts, in our lives, 
and in our church. May joy awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room for all in this house for the holy. Invite any children to come up. Any children are welcome. Come on up. Good morning. Oh, yes, you can put your bags here in this basket. You want to put your water bottle in there? Perfect. Thank you. Did you guys notice anything different in the church today? Yeah, what'd you notice? There's a harp. That's different than usual. Anything else different from usual? What? The organ is not in, the organ is not in its usual place, is it? It's out in the because middle Jesus of the chancel. All the time he has a baby called Jesus. Right. Yes. We are getting ready this afternoon for a special Christmas concert that our sanctuary musicians put together. Our choir is going to sing, and there's going to be harp music and organ music. So we have the, this part of the church is called the chancel. We have it rearranged to get ready for later today. I was thinking about music, and I was thinking about joy. Does anybody know why I was thinking about joy today? Why? Because the pink candle that today is the joy candle. That's right, it's pink candle day in Advent, which is the joy day. We take a break from the days of blue candles, and we get a pink candle on this day, the third Sunday. I know Anna knew that because she's wearing a joy sweater today. Good choice of Advent clothing. And some of you brought joy with you. I was thinking about music and how one of the things I really love about music is that even when I'm sad or afraid, something changes in me when I sing, and it reminds me that there's a way to touch joy even when things are hard or I'm sad. Sometimes, sometimes I think that joy... What's the opposite of joy? What? Sadness. Sadness? Any, any other words? Madness. Madness. Being mad. And what's the, what's a synonym is the fancy word for another word that means the same thing as joy? What's another word that means the same thing as joy? Happy. Happiness. That's right. Excited. Any others? Excited? Being excited? Uh, uh, angry. Angry is an opposite, right? Being angry is opposite of being joyful. Yeah, what? Hope. hope feels like a good word for joy. Hope. Yeah, that's, you know, one of the other of our Advent candles is, reminds us of hope, too. I think they're really connected. And what I wanted, what, what occurred to me, the big idea I had when I was thinking about joy and music was that music reminds me that joy can belong together with sadness and madness and anger and frustration, but also with hope and life. Sometimes, I don't know, have you ever had a day where just everything went wrong? Like nothing worked out, and then at some point in the day, you just decided to laugh about it? That's the best laughter in the whole world. The laughter that comes when you've known what it means to be frustrated, when things didn't go like you hoped, when you're not sure about everything, but you decide it's worth laughing anyway. I think that joy is a little bit like that. It comes out of times when we're unsure about what's happening, when we're sad and afraid. Joy reminds us that there's something there still. And it's not in us alone, it's somehow us in us in community and like music, we can share it, we can participate in it, right? Like we can sing the song, but we also sing with others, and the joy comes out of the hard stuff. Yeah, I don't like to dance. Do you like to dance? 
dance brings joy too, and all kinds of creative express art dance. and music. Do you do dance too? It feels so good to move your body, and joy comes out of our bodies, but it's not ours alone, it gets shared. So, of course, you're welcome to come to the concert today. I know that some of you, all of you, are singing in our children's choir. You're learning a song to sing on Christmas Eve at the 5 p.m. service, and I'm excited to hear that, and I'm also excited that you get to sing together every Sunday when you come to church, because music reminds us that we are people who get to know joy. Not because it's easy, not because it always goes the way we hope, but because something is still there that's beautiful and full of life, that's in us and that's meant to be shared. Will you join me in prayer? I invite you to hold your hands as we pray to God. Dear God, thank you for joy. Thank you for music. And thank you for friends. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. I look forward to hearing what happens when you're in Sunday school together. The scripture reading for this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from Luke in chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. I invite you to listen for the word of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, his winnowing fork in his hand, to clear this threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O Holy Spirit, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, the thoughts and actions of our lives would reflect the fullness and beauty of your grace. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. 
Y'all, these scriptures and songs have a lot going on today. I don't know how you felt hearing that gospel text, but granaries and unquenchable fire don't figure into my normal Christmas decorations. The bleak midwinter even is a little hard to convincingly pull off here in Southern California, though perhaps some of us have memories of childhoods or of visits to relatives in bleaker places. We gather to celebrate on this third Sunday of Advent and we tell ourselves it's the Sunday of joy, but it's a little hard to believe some days as we sing of bleak midwinter, as we read a gospel text of repentance, as we hear the difficult and life-giving invitation John the Baptist offered, a transformed life and a transformed world. I was reading words by Dorothy Day this week, a tireless advocate for Christian solidarity with the poor. She modeled in her living the commitments of the gospel and in her teaching left us invitation to do the same. She writes of having read a death notice of someone, a young sergeant pilot killed in the at, well on active service. She says that after the usual information, a message was added, which she imagined would be likely to be imitated. She says it said that anyone who had ever known the boy would always be sure of a welcome at his parents' home. So even now that the war is over, the father and mother will go on taking in strangers for the simple reason that they'll be reminded of their son by the friends that he made. She says this is rather like the custom that existed among the first generations of Christians when faith was a bright fire that warmed more than those who kept it burning. In every house, then, a room was kept ready for any stranger who might ask for shelter. It was even called a stranger's room. And this is not because these, and this, not because these people, like the parents of the airmen, thought they could trace something of someone they loved in the stranger who used it, not because the man or woman to whom they gave shelter reminded them of Christ, but because plain and simple and stupendous fact, that stranger was Christ. Dorothy Day points us in a direction of a wild way of living that speaks of welcome and hospitality, that reminds us of the radical message encapsulated in our gospel. The same Jesus who tells us that any time we offer food to those who are hungry, shelter to those in need. We are doing it to Christ. And on this third Sunday of Advent, as we prepare for Christ's birth into the world, Christ's coming in fulfillment of time, our call is to prepare room for Christ to come. And our invitation is to do that with our lives, here and now, with our homes and our churches, our community, and in this world to provide welcome for physical needs and spiritual needs, not to seek after what we as individuals need, but to somehow dare to live as those who believe that Christ is present in everyone we encounter. We get to play the part, then, of the innkeeper in the nativity story, the one who found a place, however seemingly inadequate it was, however rough around the edges, a space into which Christ comes here among us now in this world, in this life. As I was reading the gospel text from Luke today with its words about repentance, with its invitations to live out our gospel commitments in our everyday work, in how we conduct our business and how we treat other people, in Jesus' elaboration of the implications of repentance for each of the professions that came to him in the wilderness, he tells them what they should do, how they should change their business and their lives so that they would be living as people who seek 
a place for everyone. At the end of all of this, even after the words about the threshing floor, the wheat in the granary, and the chaff burned with unquenchable fire, Luke tells us that with this and many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. I don't know that I've ever been more surprised to read the phrase, the good news to the people, because the words sounded so demanding. But, but Luke wants us to remember that this is good news, this transformation that John and later Jesus expect of us won't be simple or easy, but it will be good news. I think this is what sustains us and brings us even to dare to claim joy on this third Sunday of Advent as we move closer to the precious and holy night of Christ's birth, as we experience the increasing length of the dark night. In this moment, we're reminded that we're called to share in good news and joy. Again, this year I've been grateful to be able to read through the book Christmas is for Celebrating, written by our former senior pastor, Mel Wheatley, later elected bishop. He wrote this tiny volume as an invitation to the celebration of Christmas. And he describes that we're celebrating not with, he says, undiluted happiness, but we're celebrating indomitable hope. And there's such a difference here, a critical difference that separates an expectation of happiness and joy that requires pretending everything is okay, and an indomitable hope and a deep joy that come in full knowledge of the struggle, of the pain, of the loss, and the grief. And on this third Sunday of Advent, our candle of joy is a reminder that our Christ is big enough, strong enough, and holy enough to contain all these things. All the sorrow, all the grief, all the uncertainty and anxiety and loss and fear, and also hope, and still joy. We gather to celebrate this candle of joy that's lit into the complexity of this time and this place, of our lives, that comes in full knowledge of what we've been through and what we're struggling with now. And somehow, in our sharing it together, in our bringing it together as a community to God, in our lifting the verses of song and the lines of prayer, we find that in sharing our struggle, we connect to a joy we could never manufacture on our own. It comes in full awareness of complexity and difficulty. It sustains us through it all. And I think of the sorrows and grief that this sanctuary have held through the generations of people who have come to this Place in search of hope and comfort in the very real moments of loss and uncertainty and fear. What a gift to have a physical space that reminds us in a participatory way of our God who holds open space for us all, for all that we've been, all that we hoped would be and did not come to pass, all that we claim as hope even still. And the space held open by the love of God is big enough always even still for joy. It requires our acknowledgement that we can't do it alone, that we need and seek something that is beyond ourselves, a trust that will find it in lifting up, calling out, and letting go, that will find connection to something so much bigger than who we are now, 
something that transcends. In Luke's Gospel, John the Baptist gives such clear instruction about the practical work of repentance, the practical work of changing our lives so that we're turned ever more in the direction of God. The practical work of repentance requires that we live in ways that create space for others, that accommodate the needs of others, that feed those who are hungry, that shelter those who are unhoused, that provide welcome to those who've been excluded, that make space not just for ourselves, but for an ever-widening circle, that remind us that we come together as community, not to look after just our own selves, but because the joy overflows, welcomes in and draws together in a shared community animated by hope of those of us who know and claim, even now, on just the third Sunday of Advent, even now, on, in a time when the nights are so long, even now when our hearts continue to break for loss in the world from tornado and tragedy, from our own losses and structural inequalities, even still here now, we claim and know a joy that cannot be taken away we come to share it, and it overflows always enough. Part of my invitation to you today is to consider how we decide how much is enough. And I believe our gospel text provides a clear vision of what we're talking about as John describes how people should change their lives, deciding what is enough so that they can leave some for others. But when we ask the question, how much is enough, on the Sunday when we're considering joy, it also becomes a life-giving invitation to remember and notice the things that are abounding and boundless, that multiply in their sharing, like laughter as it ripples through a dinner table conversation, like joy, as it changes our outlook and disposition, as it enables us to see a hope even in the midst of significant devastation. On this third Sunday of Advent, I invite you to be people. I invite us to be a church that considers how much is enough. How can we use the resources we have to seek after the well-being of others? And how can we share the things that lack in fixed quantity, the things that multiply as they're shared? How can we be a community that brings joy and hope and love and peace to a world so in need? I look forward to continuing the work of being the church with you, of looking for ways to experience and share joy of offering it to a world in need. May we be the carriers, the bearers, the multipliers of joy today and always. Amen.
people have prayers. Even we who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. So the people have prayers. Let us find them in these moments. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. In this season of Advent, O Lord, we are preparing to celebrate the Christ, our center of joy. It takes time to prepare for such a mystery, and we are getting ready. The world awaits the coming, the world suffering in disease and lost in poverty seeks a healer. So come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. We want to be the people who have seen the light. Help us when we flounder in darkness. We want to be those who include Help us when we push others away. We want to be the people fulfilling the promise of this beautiful expression of worship and love and joy. Help us to be about that work. And so we take this time to prepare for an awakening of your love and your joy. Let our living reflect your ways. Let our homes announce your coming. Let our fellowship become a welcoming place for all who seek your loving presence. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for being with us in worship today. It's a gift to be together. It's a gift to sing a joyous song. I hope that you've felt the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding here as we gather online and in person. And I want to encourage you always to go deeper in your life of faith and in connection to the congregation. We've got a couple of well, several special things coming up as we get close to uh, the Christmas Eve. So I want you to know that you're invited to come back to this place today at 3 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We'll have our sanctuary Christmas concert. It's going to be fantastic with beautiful music from our section leader soloists, our choir, harp, and organ. It will be also an opportunity for us to sing together. There's sing-along portions and some readings. It's going to be a joy. You can also participate by live stream if you're not able or uh, it's not practical to be here live. I um, encourage you to be a part of that. Next Sunday, the 19th, directly after worship, we're having an all-church Christmas party on the courtyard. So we're going to have some cocoa and cookies all together with our Sanctuary and Loft congregations uh, in celebration of the holidays. So we encourage you to plan to stay after next week for that time, opportunity for fellowship with one another. I also want you to know that we're going to have worship on Christmas Eve, and it's not too soon to think of someone you know that you might want to invite to join us. Our two services at 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. will be here in this space with candlelight and uh, song. The both will be live streamed as well, so that's another way to participate that you might extend outward. Our children will be participating in the 5 o'clock service, uh, reenacting the Christmas story in Christmas pageant, and our children's choir and chimes choir uh, will be playing. It will be a joy. I hope you'll come if you're able and spread the word. Uh, our Scattered for Service alternative uh, Christmas giving marketplace is online this year, and it's available anytime, both to shop for fair trade items and to make donations to a number of nonprofit groups and projects in lieu of Christmas presents. You get a beautiful card to download and print that you can give to someone who has plenty of things and would delight in a gift like that. I encourage you to participate. Now, I in, invite you to be people who know the joy of Christ, who trust that here with us always in present connection to the struggle and the challenge, Christ's joy sings on still and invites us to know that God desires for us to have fullness of life. God wishes for us to experience the gospel as good news and joy. So may the joy of Christ be with you always. Be in peace. Amen. <laughs>